going to have Rob from the AIDS Fund, which is housed here at the William Way Center. It's on the fourth floor. We're going to have Rob come up and tell you guys a little bit about the AIDS Fund. Back in uh, 2004, when I became executive director of the AIDS Fund, um, we decided that year to have the theme of Remember Why We Walk. AIDS Fund produces the AIDS Walk. And as part of that, um, I made the decision to bring the quilt to the AIDS uh, Walk that year. Um, and that has grown into, since then, um, AIDS Fund B, the local affiliate for the Names Project, the AIDS Memorial Quilt. Um, and we do displays throughout the Philadelphia region, uh, as far up as Allentown, uh, throughout the year. And in the course of the uh, last year, over 30,000 people viewed the quilt as a result of our efforts. Um, it's the world's largest community arts project. Each of these panels that you see, um, and we'll talk the way, um, since we're in the William Way Community Center, um, Bill Way was a member of Dignity, and uh, Dignity Philadelphia, the um, local LGBT Catholic uh, community, um, created this panel for him after he passed away. Um, you'll see every panel is different, and there's over 50,000 panels in, that um, are a part of the quilt today. Um, the quilt's too large now to be viewed in any one place. Um, it hasn't been viewed in its entirety um, since 1996 in Washington, D.C. Um, and for those of us who had the opportunity to go and see the quilt at that time, um, it was an incredibly moving experience. Um, I'm going to tell you a little story of um, uh, my experience with the quilt, probably um, one of my most profound experiences with a few years back, um, we got a phone call in the weeks leading up to the AIDS walk. And I spoke to this woman who said, um, I understand you're having a display of the AIDS Memorial Quilt there. I spoke to the Names Project there based in Atlanta. And I have a panel I would like to present at the walk, if that's OK. I said, absolutely. Whenever there's a quilt display, the opportunity to present a new panel uh, is part of the display. Um, honestly, I got busy and um, kind of forgot about that conversation. The morning of the AIDS walk, um, we had um, our stage manager comes over to me and says, Rob, there's a woman here who says she has a panel of the quilt to present. And I'm like, oh, yes, we need to do that. Um, meanwhile, um, Mayor Street was waiting to speak and I had to make him wait while we did this. Um, but. We brought her and her family came up on stage and she was holding the panel with her arms outstretched. And I went over to accept it. And as soon as I did, she went like this and the tears were streaming down her face. And um, she just couldn't let go. Um, we, she finally dropped the panel, or, you know, dropped her arms and passed the panel on to me. Um, and she and I walked the panel over and laid it out at the base of the art museum steps with the rest of the quilt panels. Um, and, you know, when we laid it out, I found her daughter's name was Robin and her name was Marge. So, a couple years go by, and Marge, and, and we are having a World AIDS Day event over here at St. Luke and the Epiphany Church. And we have blocks in the quilt displayed much like this, but hanging from the, the banister around the uh, balcony of the, of the church. And it's beautiful. And it's a sunny day, sun shining in through the stained glass windows onto the quilt panels. It was absolutely one of the most beautiful displays we've done. And in walks this family. And this woman walks over to me, grabs my hand, and says, Hi, Rob. Will you come with me? said okay, and I didn't immediately recognize her. Um, when we go over, we look up at the panel, and she goes, there's my Robin. She's hanging with her peeps. Um, at that point, um, I realized who it was, um, and how now, now how much it meant to her. She had such a hard time letting go of that panel, but how much it meant to her 
that it was now part of this bigger thing. And that her Robin was now part, you know, and was hanging with her peeps. Um, so, I'll never forget that. And um, a couple years go by, and we would try to get Robin's panel every year. And Robin and Marge and her family would show up at every AIDS walk. They would come up from Cape May, New Jersey, every year for the AIDS walk. And um, one year we weren't able to get Robin's panel. It was someplace else in the country. And I called Marge and said, hey Marge, I'm sorry we're not able to get the panel, but, you know, Robin's panel this year is someplace else in the country. She came to me and said, and she's like, oh, okay. And on the day of the walk, she shows up with her whole family in tow and says to me, um, and I'm like, Marge, I'm sorry. And said, we don't have Robin's panel this year. And she's like, it's okay. She said, I just wanted to be near the quill. And Robin's out doing what she needs to do. She's out touring the country, raising awareness about HIV. Um, and that, to me, is exactly what the quilt is about. Marge's story and Robin's story is exactly what the quilt's about. It's about raising awareness. It's about memorializing those we've lost in this epidemic. Um, and it's about being out there in the community. We take the quilt all over the place. Um, we want people to see it. Okay? We don't want it sitting on a shelf somewhere. Um, and so that's the, the quilt. Um, real quick, um, AIDS Fund's mission is to raise awareness about HIV. And today we're talking, and, and while the quilt memorializes our loved ones, we also want to, and we always want to remember those we've lost in this epidemic. We can never forget the, the hundreds of thousands, millions of people we've lost in this epidemic. But we're looking forward also. Today we're talking about getting to zero. Zero new infections, zero um, deaths from HIV, and zero stigma. We have the tools to do that today with PrEP. We now, we now know one pill a day can keep somebody from contracting HIV. That somebody who is undetectable and is in treatment and care and has all the resources they need to stay healthy is unlikely to transmit the virus to somebody else. We have the tools to end the epidemic. We just have to have the will to do it. And so, while we don't have that magic bullet we would love, we still need to fight to get a vaccine. We need to make sure that people have access to the treatments that are out there, that they're able to sustain themselves on it, and that people who are at high risk know about PrEP and can make a decision whether or not it's the right choice for them. Um, AIDS Fund just recently evolved our mission in order to um, even more fully move towards getting to zero. And we now offer emergency funds for people living with HIV who find themselves in a financial situation where they may lose their housing, where they can't keep their heat on, where they don't feel safe, where they may lose their health insurance because they're behind or fell behind on a premium. We're now able to provide small grants that help them to do that so that they can maintain their health. You can't maintain their health. This event is not just, you know, to make sure you know what your status is and how important that is, um, and to make sure that you get tested regularly. Um, and you just are very, very aware. We all different mentality it seems it seems challenging i don't say hard because only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on everything else is a challenge um so so i'm ready i'm ready for this challenge and i was built i was built for this i think that i think we all we all have a purpose in life and mine and mine is going to take on a test that most that most of Back away from that impossible. That impossible. So people, people say it's impossible. I see possibilities. I don't see. Anything. I don't see anything as being impossible. Mentality. Mentality. There are there are different mentalities, but just like just like there's different ways to teach people how to do it. There's different.